Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. Now, it's not uncommon knowledge that I have a lot of Space Marines, and whilst I love them, sometimes coming up with new and interesting ideas can be difficult. So I thought, why not try the ultimate randomizer in making my decisions? Dice. But Sam, I hear you cry, how are you going to do that? Well, I'm going to set some parameters. We're going to start by doing a standard Space Marine Captain. We're going to roll for what chapter he is, what loadout he has, whether he has a jump pack, and ultimately what kind of traits he has, which will help me decide what the piece is going to be. To quickly talk you through the table, on the left I've got chapter, I'm going to roll d6 plus a d3, the d3 is going to be grey and the d6 is going to be white, the loadout on 2d6, the jump pack on d6, and traits on d6 out of all these choices. Point to note, the lightning claws count as two weapons, so I won't roll again if I get those. Got it? Got it. Okay, let's roll for the chapter. That's a six, so iron hands. Okay. Now to roll for the loadout. Seven, probably the most common number, and that's lightning claws. Easy peasy. Now we have to roll to see if he has a jump pack or not, and yeah, one to three, that's yes. And finally, for his personality traits, we've rolled a two, which is stealthy? Right, so let me get me straight. We have an iron hand who has a jump pack and lightning claws and wants to be stealthy. I don't think we can be sure that he didn't just get dressed in the dark and accidentally put on the Raven Guard Battle Brothers uniform instead of his own, but uh, okay, we'll give it a go. So as he's got a jump pack, I used the Vanguard Veteran Sergeant legs from, helpfully, the Vanguard Veteran box. I also paired that with some Forge World Mark III iron armor as I thought that would make him look a little bit more iron handsy. Despite the fact he's going to be stealthy, holding lightning claws, he still needs to be an iron hand. So I went for that. It's good armor. When I thought about how I wanted this pose, these running lightning claws seemed to really speak to me, especially in conjunction with the legs. And it started to give me some ideas about how I wanted to pose this guy in the final composition. A head full of optics from the Devastator kit because Iron Hands won't be caught dead without loads of optics and sensors. And it also does lean into his stealthy vibe. I also have a bunch of these big cog tooth shoulder pads that I've never had a chance to use. I bought them for my death watch and used them maybe once, so I was absolutely using them here because they're epic. And of course I gave him a standard captain shoulder pad for his right arm. Keeping in mind he had to be somewhat tactical and stealthy, I added a few pouches to his left hip and of course planned the arm then flew away as I was pushing these in. Absolutely meant to happen, don't worry, just uh, did that with my mind, it was fine. After playing it off like it was meant to happen, I reattached the arm that absolutely wasn't supposed to go flying across the room. As he's stealthy, he might be a bit of a saboteur, so I added some melter charges from the Horus Heresy Mark VI Marines to his right hip. Could be going around blowing stuff up, pretty cool. And of course, for his jump pack, I chose the Sergeant's Jump Pack from the Vanguard Veterans Kit. Leaning in heavily to that kit here as I had a bunch of spares, and you know, it's an awesome kit. I really recommend looking into it if you haven't already. To add more lights and lenses to him to make him look more Iron's Handsy, whilst also keeping that behind enemy lines feel, I added some apothecary stuff from a Deathwing kit. Finally, I added a servo arm to make him look undeniably Iron Hands. This is from the Engine Seer kit for the Admech. He's a little bit top heavy, but I think all old school Space Marines are, and I quite like the way he looks. It's very weird. I wouldn't have necessarily designed an Iron Hand like this, but the dice have told me what to do. The final thing I did was add one more optic slash sensor to the top to make him look more mechanical and also have some more optics because optics are cool and very stealthy and tactical. Use optics, they're great. I was so inspired by the idea of this build and I really wanted to lean more into the stealth aspect of this Iron Hand, so I took some rubble on the left from March of War and on the right from Games Workshop and made a little composition. As I mentioned briefly earlier, I just had this vision of him trying to make his escape after completing some kind of assassination or some kind of sabotage, so I wanted him to be running past this ruined column with a Tau drone looking for him as if he's just killed one of their commanders and now needs to get the hell out of Dodge. I dry fitted our heroic stealthy captain a few times just to see how he fit in with the composition and I decided I wanted him a little bit further forward than I initially showed here. Before putting him on, I wanted to add a bunch of texture paste to the base to tie everything together, but my big trusty tub of AK stuff has finally died after months and months and months, so I made my own. I mixed some Zavallejo thick mud with some stones I had in a jar, and Bob's your uncle. Easy peasy. I mixed all this up thoroughly, and the entire time I was thinking about icing a cake, and it just made me really hungry, but once again, I didn't eat the paste, don't worry. 
what I did with the paste is put it on the base like you're supposed to. With all the paste down, I tied up the base rim with my thumb just so there was no bits drying in an overhang. I can't paint this this week unfortunately, but I still want it to be tidy for later. Off camera I built up a gun drone that I'm going to glue slightly behind the pillar as if it's making its way up and over the rubble looking for our hero. Or is he a villain? I honestly don't know in this scenario. Using super glue and activator I managed to glue this drone to the rubble by the end of one of its pulse carbines, giving it the illusion of flying. Given there are a bunch of gaps and stuff in the windows, I did think it fairly simple for the drone to see our space marine, so I cut one of these spare smoke grenades from the easy to build, or rather monopose, infiltrator kit. I think the name of this mini diorama has got to be Smoke Bomb, because yeah, he's just dropped smoke and he's running like hell out of there. After clearing away some of the paste on the bottom of the base, I super glued our main character in and then decided that I didn't like where the smoke grenade was because you couldn't really see it. So I moved it further to the right, like he's just chucked it back behind him as he makes a headlong sprint out of danger. Or into further danger, I don't know. I did decide however it needed one more thing, some evidence of what he's been doing. So I took this spare towel flamer. I know it's not much, but I thought this would be a cool thing to have lying on the ground with some lightning claw scratches in it. After tidying it up, I used my scalpel, which is a fairly dull thing, so don't panic for my fingers, and made some evenly spaced gouges or scratches that were roughly spaced to the same size of this little Space Marine's lightning claws. Now I'm really looking forward to painting these gouges with some kind of burn effect. I think it will look absolutely awesome. Unfortunately, I can't do that this week, as I've previously mentioned, because I've just done a big video for Winter's SEO, which if you're watching this on the day of release, is out tomorrow. If you're watching this in the future, it's hopefully out already, so go back and take a look. Needless to say, it's epic. Placing the flamer on the ground, I was done. And just as a reminder, this is what I started with, and here's what we ended up with. A really cool diorama that I would have never made by myself because the dice decided everything. Maybe give it a go, let me know what you think. And I think I'm gonna do a giveaway on this one when it's complete to my channel members, so watch this space. And that's been another video. I've been Sam. See you next time.